Hello, and welcome to one of the days of FE3. I'm not sure which day it is, but it is the day that features Lex Telefonus, a telephone-style fan game made in the Lex Talionis engine. Uh, so for those of you who don't know what a telephone-style game is, uh, you basically get a bunch of people together, and everyone makes a chapter and then passes it off to the next person. And so on and so forth until the plot is ruined beyond all recognition. So today's short demo will feature the prologue and chapter 3x. As well as this cool cutscene. Listen to those sound effects. It's the power of non-midi, baby. As you can probably tell, I'm not going to be reading all the text out loud. Because we simply don't have that much time. There's a lot to unpack. Hope you guys are looking forward to it. Such as disembodied voices. And of course, since it's Fire Emblem, your choices really matter. Ah, psych! Your choices really do matter. Yeah, that's right. It's time to pick a face. Let's see. I always go with the person on the far right. Just how I roll. Over here we have class selection. All right, let's really build your own character time. I'm gonna go with the thief because you never know when you're gonna need lockpick utility. Thieves in this game also do use daggers instead of swords. Oh man, look at that three strip. That's what I'm talking about. Don't let the game fool you when you guys play. You're all kings. Alright, we can choose to be a lord or a lady, but I'm going to choose to be too cool for pronouns. Hell yeah. Oh, coming up is my favorite dialogue selection. Are you ready? See, the disembodied voice is going to ask what's special about you, and you get the choice to lie. Which is what I'm gonna do. Boom. Alright, name selection time. Uh, so, I'm Sigma Raven, and I worked on one of the chapters for this project. Maybe two, depending on if you play guided chapters or not. But, we're going to name our character Mag, who is a different developer on the project because Mag is shorter. know what I want. Mag doesn't know what Mag wants. Oh, so we're doing dirty work. See? Also, we're dead. That's why I chose Mag instead of myself. Alright, so as you might notice, we're skipping straight to chapter 3x, and we're not going to be looking at the prologue or anything. Er, chapter 1, you know. That was the prologue to character selection. We're not going to be looking at chapter 1. So, uh, if you guys want to see how the story actually begins, you gotta play the game yourself. Here we have... Yep, see? We're dead. Look at the different style text boxes. Oh yeah, disembodied text box in the middle. Edward. I like Edward. He's one of my favorites. Yeah, so if you've been reading fast, our characters so far are Edward the Taxi Driver, and then Feodor and Mick. <laughs> but 
The one that left is Fyodor, by the way. Alright, so we're off to find Mag's body. And this is going to be one of the cooler things I want to showcase. First of all, this is a free roam segment. And Lex Talionis, you can kind of just make maps where you do this, you know, walk around and stuff. But look at that spooky, ominous assassin in the shadows there. You can't interact with that. You can find patches of flowers on the ground and talk to them. I'm going to actually skip past this conversation so you can see for yourselves when you play. A 3X, although it was made specifically for the FEE 3 demo, will actually be a part of the main project. So you'll be able to play this chapter too. Which is why I'm going to be skipping past some of it. You know, I don't want to spoil everything. Also, uh, it should bear pointing out that Mick does in fact follow you around like the Pikachu in Pokemon Yellow. That's some cool tech right there. Alright, so we got the next section of the map now. Look at this map. Like, I don't know, everyone says like map design for, you know, how well the map is when it comes to gameplay. So I can't really use that word, but Look at this map aesthetic. Everyone who uh, worked on this part is basically a genius. And of course, I did not do anything for this part of the project. Didn't touch the FE3 demo at all. I'm just playing it. So if you guys want to know who worked on what, you know, I'm sure we'll have like a uh, specific credits for chapter by chapter designers. Or maybe we'll try to keep it a secret and then have people guess and no one will care and then we'll just release the list afterwards anyway. So as you can see we have this thing where you know if you try to interact with something well question mark pops up you find out that of course you can't go through doors because they are all locked because this is still a JRPG. Yeah. Don't miss out on stuff you might be able to interact with like bloodstains. Free Roam is definitely uh, one of the big things we want to showcase with the Telephone Project, you know? And uh, people put a lot of love into these maps. Love and also just like over the top. Just look at this. I'm actually recording this far later than I should be, but the project was basically finished finished like this part of the project was finished finished a little bit before the second deadline if you guys don't know fe3 had two deadlines this year there was a bit of an extension granted unusual occurrence and uh you know we took the opportunity to clean up a little and by we i mean everyone who wasn't me so uh i promised when i signed up to record videos for fe3 I would make fun of anyone who got things in at the last moment. It was by far the laster moment. But I mean, look at it. Definitely worth the time. Although actually the map was done for a while and part of the uh, time spent was just, you know, making sure the chapter would be up to snuff. Everything works out. No weird bugs. Making sure you can raid people's closets. Bang. Everyone's missing Mag. <clears throat> Alright, so once... You've interacted with the fireplace. Uh, as you can see, I just pulled some charcoal out from that chest. You can just do that. And of course... No one ever really knows how warm they want to be in a building. That's just a fact of life. You ever set the AC down a degree, and then a moment later you're like, Actually, I gotta turn it back up. Alright, here we have a thief unit. Which is good, because I picked thief and then I died. Oh yeah, there's a secret book here. And there's other goodies scattered around the map as well, too. So keep that in mind when you play. I won't spoil all of them. That was just one of them. And so we're going to be... looking for that person who ran off here.
not every door works, as you can see. But it does pay to look around, see if there's any secret goodies or dialogue you might be missing. Come out or we'll shoot. Yeah, unfortunately this game doesn't actually feature guns, I think. But you know. So we gotta coax her out. You know what that means? We saw a pantry earlier. Gotta head to the pantry. I already got lost. This map is huge, look at this. I, uh, I promise that most of the actual gameplay maps are not this big. It would be scary if they were. Wait a second, did I miss the key earlier? Yeah, I missed the key. That's my bad. So I guess the uh, mages in this uh, game are probably like doctors, you know? Oh yeah. Let's go. Key time. Like I said, I'm mainly skipping through a swath of the plot here. More just demonstrating, you know, the stuff in the game. Which is being able to walk around while being followed by your ranger. Those are the two duties of brothers, you got that? Buy snacks for your homies and bury them when they get killed in a raid on someone else's mansion. Okay, let's see what we're looking for here. Okay, full name, Mikhail Simonov. That's a name. Some of these names won't make sense to you guys right now because this is chapter 3 and we've kind of jumped past a little bit of the beginning stuff. But uh, I do encourage you guys to read through this carefully when you play yourselves because there might be plot tidbits hidden around as well. I feel like I mentioned that already. If I did, my bad. Anyway, let's go raid the pantry. Midnight snacking time. Can't keep a man from his meat. Yeah, that's right, Theodore. You tell him. Alright, so we got some water. We got a knife. <laughs> we got some grapes. What do I use those for? We got a bucket of water. And we got some glistening meat. <laughs> Don't try this at home, kids. Alright, now that we have some nice food, we're going to make our way over slowly to the thief. And boop. In case you can't tell, I'm holding down my version of the B button to uh, run faster. You can do that. That's a thing you can do. Alright, so as you can see when you play the chapter, you gotta feed the thief. The creature reappears. And of course, we're gonna go up the classic fire emblem if you see somebody and they have a portrait and they're not red they'll probably join you and if they are red they'll probably still join you comes the fire emblem convincing as you can see mikhail is the real main character here
You can hear the uh, custom track in the background too. <clears throat> There'll be a uh, music credits, of course, included with the game. But uh, people really just pulled music from a lot of weird stuff. Cause it's all OGG files for this. A lot of the portraits you'll see in this are um, just, you know, repository stuff, but actually, like, uh, <clears throat> we did have some people do some custom ones for more important characters. Uh, again, those will be included in the credits as well. Oh! Alright, Michaela Chu has finally rejoined us. So now, uh, if you were reading while I skipped through everything earlier, uh, there is, in fact, a secret reading room over here. Which you can only access while you have the thief in tow, because she works here. And probably isn't actually a thief, you know, like, in the literal sense, just it's her class, you know. I would definitely raw whole wheel cheese. <laughs> All right, look at that. Spooky red text, point of no return. I've skipped over a few secrets on purpose, you might have noticed. We got some grapes we don't know what to do with. We got water we don't know what to do with. You might notice I'm walking slower in this part. That's because I'm forced to walk slower. This is the spooky hallway of suspense. Oof. Yeah, it's us. We're alive. And that by that, I mean Mag is alive. I didn't actually kill off Mag. This is spoilers, but so is every FAE3 video, usually, unless it's a trailer. I've come back to haunt you. All right, so as you can see, we've got a pretty extensive walk around, get plot, find secrets section, and then now we're going to get to the fire moment. Yeah, so you know, we created a character in the prologue, and then sometime between then and chapter 3x the main character quote dies unquote but survives because of pure skill Getting past this because you know it's a lot of fun. It doesn't quite make much sense yet. So spooky mage character that has like magical doom bot strats. Look at that, it's an image. Oh, look at this, look at this. There's some tech I was waiting to show off. Extra wide dialogue bubbles. All right, I'm, I'm 
I'm done. <laughs> that was it. That was just a joke. Dang, killing people is like not even that important. As you can see, the main character is some sort of uh, escapee from some sort of mysterious shadow organization. Uh, and clearly very important to the plot. And it's it's Final Awakening, it's Robin. I mean, I'm kidding, it's not actually Robin, but you know. Oh no, I have two of these now. I'm gonna be so confused. This is going to hold true for the final version, by the way. Yeah, feel free to just blow everything you need. Now, let's quickly go through the units we got here. We have Feodor, he's got a sword. He's got Deathmatch, which I think is a skill that shows up in like SNES or Tearing Saga. And you basically just fight someone like that. Fine. And then Smite, which pushes target away three spaces. You might notice some of these skills have mana costs. Uh, like Stallion this does by default support a mana system. So for this game, uh, you get 20 mana every chapter. You get two if you get a kill during player phase. Have uh, some Kanto plus combat art shenanigans, reposition, good stuff, classic. And Edward, who is our convoy for at least this map, has act twice, actually broken. A bribe, you can greenify a unit for 2,000 gold. And gamble to get a random amount of gold. So as you can notice, the average expected ga value of gamble is 500. Or so. <clears throat> and we have 20 mana, so we can get an average of 2,000 gold to bribe one person. And we have some items here, because even though Edward has act twice, he doesn't have any weapon ranks, so he relies solely on throwing shit at the enemy. And finally, we have Enya over here, uh, unfortunate uh, servant in the household, having to survive. She's got the typical thief stuff and permanent Luna. And the ability to jump back two spaces and then regain her movement. So I'll try to show that off. It's a bit of a it's a bit of a fussy, you know. And we're willing to give her the leftovers because As you can see, this bucket of water also really doesn't do anything. Uh, you'll have to figure out what it's for. I'm sure some of you have already pieced that together. These guys have cool weapons too, but we'll get into what those do once we start. Alright, so we got to defeat Isla, who is the boss over here. If you look, she's got level 9 and 20 health because of this. The Crimson Contract. So this game has accessories, meaning that your fifth item slot is basically reserved for stuff that grants weird passive bonuses. So look out for that. In this case, it grants her plus three to important stuff. She gains mana every turn, and her max range increases as her mana goes up. So over time, you're going to want to get close, or just get fried trying to get in. 
basically she turns into a bulbing cloud. So we have the press info button for light up enemy ranges, and of course we have to select an enemy to mark their range sort of thing, seen in the more modern games. You can also change your controls here if you want, this is how I like it set up. And there's also joystick support as well, although the sensitivity can be a bit finicky I fear. And finally there is the turn wheel. Uh, there's nothing to turn wheel right now. But luckily I am a bad player, so there will very soon be something to turn wheel, I promise. Alright, he's got a plus 25 crit, minus 25 crit, avoid sword, for when you just want to die. Light brand, which does magic damage, which will be pretty bad on him right now. We'll just use the hero killer here. I've turned animations off. That was a mistake. So first of all, we'll take a look at the objectives. Okay, only Feodor and McKillian to survive. Not Mag, surprisingly. We'll turn on the animations, and we'll turn wheel back. Look at that. I can see this again with animations. You've heard the music pick up just now, because we also have the whole uh, DS game, Switch game. Music intensifies upon thing happening going on. So, you know, music gets cooler when there's a battle or something. Alright, there's a lot going on here. I think I'm gonna... I don't know if I want to shoot. Oh yeah, and here's us. We... Don't have any skills. And we also can't use the dagger we came with. That That's a bug, don't worry, that's gonna get fixed eventually. Looks like I have just started a self-imposed challenge. Huzzah, let's go. Alright, egg bomb. You got a lot of funky usables in this game. Mikhail, high value unit here. These guys just have a steel bow and a steel sword. I don't think they'll instantly destroy Theodore. So let's just... This guy can always counter us, so we're gonna just use the steel bow. I haven't turned on enemy range just because there's a 0% chance I'm safe right now. Use the Heaven Slicer? Yes, but I can't use the Iron Dagger. Okay, let's go. No weapon ranks. Alright, I'm gonna send Edward up top because he's got 40 health. He's pretty bulky. Things will probably just try to attack him instead of doing anything important. <laughs> oh, look at that low roll. That's painful. There you go. That's a hint for how Isla works. If you're not me and you didn't literally work on the game, you already knew that. So, you know. Alright, so around here is the Excalibur somewhere. So be on the lookout for that. As you can see, Edward is pretty beefy and doesn't get doubled too easily, so I'm just going to park it there. Oh! Whoops. Always check your ranges, people. Rogues aren't too much to worry about here. All right. We've got some random backup.
Imagine being indebted to the cart driver. Alright, through the power of, I guess, blackmail, we now have more party members. Let's take a look really quickly at what they do. And Ellie's got giving other targets mana, so you know, mana battery, that's pretty cool, and gaining double mana from kills. And Clyde has immortal, instead of dying, use one of each stat. Keep an eye out for this, it shows up on a few units. Becoming invincible for a turn and summoning a random monster. So, let's get rid of this guy over here, because I don't want Clyde to get speared. So although the units here were all more or less designed by, I think, like, uh, the same person, I'm not sure I think it was that case, uh, essentially most of the chatters we have will have one or two recruitable units, and each person was given a sort of complexity budget of three skills per unit. So you'll see units more or less similar to these guys, uh, not Mag, who doesn't have anything they can do. But uh, everyone will have a little something to work with. Even units that seem weak at first might actually have some hidden uses, so keep an eye out for that as well. Alright, so as you can see, we cannot one-round this guy. But what we can do is deathmatch him, let's go... So they'll stay locked in arena combat until it's all over, which is right now. Okay, speaking of which, now that we saw uh, Annalie and Clyde's animations, we can turn animations back off again. There we go. I don't know why that was so hard for me to do. Uh, we're gonna hit and run here. Get rid of this guy. Be far away from those two clowns. Mark this range so I don't get chumped again. Great. Alright, hopefully Feodor doesn't just die randomly. Alright, so if we backdash here, she will refresh. I'm not sure how many times a turn I can do that actually. Okay, one, because I can't really, uh, use the skill again, so that's how it works. The herb, anything you can use on another player, is, or another unit, is typically going to be a staff, so we'll just herb it up there, move our totally unusable lord down, and we're going to Frosty Bomb, deal 10 damage and inflict move minus 6 in an area. Seems like just a thing for our situation here. You know what? We're gonna also regular bomb them. Because these guys gotta go. I want them in range of this uh, rogue over here, though. So we're gonna do it from this angle. Here we go. Get Enya done. As you can see, the cult, uh, you know, dagger guys, they don't really do that much, so it's not a big deal. That's a lot of enemies, though. Great. <clears throat> Luckily, Edward acts twice and has bombs, so let's just handle this somehow.
there's a bit of a conversation here. I'm gonna pass over it for now. Alright, we'll have Enya pick up a kill. That's easy for her to pick up. Here, uh, that's that's dicey. I don't want to do that. We'll have this guy over here use his two four range bow that's brave at two range. Finish off the caster. This brand does not finish there, so we're, we'll have Theodore take another hit. I think here. Hero killer. We'll get hit by the boat, but that's okay. And Nelly can move forward. Finally, we'll advance far. Reuse these guys with the frosty bomb. And then move back. And also freeze these guys to the Frosty Bomb. <clears throat> As you can see, movement-related shenanigans are uh, extremely prevalent in this game. I mean, maybe they're not if you're a better player than me, but I am not a better player than me. So, I will take all the cheese I can get. Oh my god, the cultists. Oh my god, okay. Alright, so that means her range is gonna start expanding. Which is bad. So let's see. First of all, we should finally get rid of this annoying light user over here. Do I get crit? Never punished. Let's go. This allows me to use the time honor tradition of bribery to get someone to my side. If you're checking your objective, you can see how much gold you have. I have not enough! You lied to me, Edward. Okay, so I'm not gonna do that. That's yeah, not gonna fly. Okay. You're just gonna take a hit from the bow because that literally won't do anything to you. Use a flex here, and I have a strategy. Are you ready? <clears throat> gonna use an egg bomb. And then we're gonna just use another egg bomb. Boom, we did it. Okay, there's some enemies here, but I don't think they can really touch me. So I'm going to go over here, backdash, see that little positioning trick over there, and get this guy who has the uh, bow over here. Alright, now I can turn this on, and okay, it's still kind of a mess. Oh, it's because of this guy. Once I get rid of this guy, everything will be fine. Use the bar so you don't die. I have full mana with you, so I can do whatever I want. Oh, I didn't run. Okay. Never mind. Brave bow. There we go. So I might be thinking. Oh, it's just a guidance chapter. That's why these guys have stupidly overpowered looking weapons. And you're correct in a certain regard, but 
trust me, there's a lot of weird stuff to abuse in the game proper. Like that thing. I can't get that. That'll be left as an exercise for the reader with you guys. As you can see, this guy's uh, light tome cannot crit, which is great for us. Let's go. Isla's range has start, slowly started to creep up. As you can see, she's got one, two, three, four, five range now. So we do have to get moving a little bit. But not too much. We don't have to rush it. Uh, okay, we can just use his absolute busted Hawkeye over here. We have this Munio Tome, which is good for withstanding physical attacks. Let's give that a shot. 62% hit rate. Let's go. Sneak bag by. And Edward. Okay. Let's see if I can get enough money to do something with this guy. Physics staff? Okay. As you can see, there is a mana potion as well. Come on. High roll! Yeah, high roll, let's go. So he's got Kanto, which means I can now Kanto into range to bribe this bishop. And there we go, we're in the money. Let's go. Ah yes, that is a three range light tome. As you can see, if you take too long, reinforcements stop are popping up. But uh, since this is the guidance chapter, you know, just blow all your stuff and then rush through it. Easy peasy. Or not, and take your time to find that secret item that I totally just let slip. More money. Let's go. Instantly, this fleet also has money in it. If you picked a flyer main character, it is. Okay, I think I want to get Mikhail up there and just raid bow the boss. So we're gonna dagger here. Get more gold. Oh, now I kind of want to just bribe someone. Let's see. How much money do I have again? 2,070. You can't bribe the boss bribe anyone else. Got a 1-2 range axe over here. As you can see, this bishop's stats aren't really that great either, besides the uh, resistance. The mana potion. Ah, I can't get the mana potion if I bribe. Alright. And finally, we're gonna just walk up and hit her. And if you're wondering... Why I wouldn't want to, like, attack at this range, despite the brave thing. Look at that. Six hit rate. Because we got a keen intuition over here. Just in case you guys forgot earlier. So that's that. Pretty simple chapter. But again, this is just a guide-in. Wait a second. Oh, no. I forgot to show off for animation. I have a solution for that. Watch. Okay. So we're going to skip past everything for a moment. Uh-oh. What's the reset button? Give me a second. Uh... There we go. Okay. So, uh... A little bit of secret Lex Talionis tech that we're going to go into, which isn't related to the telephone project directly, but we've all made tons of use of this. If you have debug mode on your game, It'll automatically save your progress at the beginning of every chapter you play. So, if, for example, you're doing an FEE3 demo, and you've forgotten to show off the boss's animation, you can just go back and do that. 
There we go. Okay. <clears throat> We're back. And before I forget again, animation on. Okay. Let's hope this works. Yeah, let's go. That's that. Uh, again, this has been the FE3 demo of Lex Telephonus. So while this chapter, set of chapters, I don't know, was made as sort of a uh, committee effort, small committee, but still, um, the other chapters you'll see will have been designed by, you know, just one individual with some story tweaking to make sure things fit together. So expect wild shifts in, uh, you know, plot, tonality, character design, items dropped, difficulty. But also expect, like, just a lot of really crazy stuff that you might not expect to see put into a skill necessarily. So yeah, you know, I hope you enjoyed this demonstration of Walking Around Simulator featuring uh, Michaela Chu. Uh, <clears throat> your choice is actually mattering. And, uh, well, the combat was easy for that chapter. I'm going to let you on a secret. It's so that I wouldn't just, like, die or anything. Now, I'm sure that's not the real reason, but that's the reason in everyone's hearts, you know. They were like, oh man, this guy's going to record for FEE3, and he's just totally going to die, and the recording's going to take forever. And we're coming up to the deadline. Better make the chapter easy enough for him to complete. So there we go. That's chapter 3XX. Uh, one note, uh, you'll see a lot of free roam and then combat chapters uh, later on in the game. Uh, the free roam chapters and the combat chapters right after are usually made by the same person. So, you know, it wasn't like we made everyone do a only a free roam or only a combat chapter. And uh, that's basically it, you know? Uh, I can't really say much to the quality of this game because A, I worked on it, so I'm super biased. My chapter, my chapter is in the, uh, the first half, you know, just if you want to try and guess. Uh, and the second reason is because everyone did a lot of really different stuff. So, you know, set your conventions aside and just try to have some fun. And, uh, yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed the rest of FEE3. Or if this was the last FEE3 presentation, uh, hope you enjoy the rest of the year until the next FEE3. Well, anyway, cheers. Have a good time.